Now here we have a B16 head. We are prepping to port for a B20 VTEC project that's going to run 1 up pistons and Pro 2 cams. That will turn into a build series so you better subscribe to make sure you catch it. For now we'll share some tips and tricks and porting. Also we'll talk about our VTEC conversion trick and port matching. Let's go! Now before we get in too deep, I'd like to talk about the exhaust ports. It's tricky, but sadly it's often neglected. You port it too much and gain too much port volume, you kill torque. Suddenly it's cool lang sa compression, or the cam is too big. And when they degree the cam on the dyno, it makes more power by moving the cam gears backwards. That is because the engine is trying to tell you something and it's not the headers. Most likely it's the port volume. So now let's go roughing up the exhaust ports. Once again, our alcohol mix with liquid soap. We gotta spray some ahead of time before the cartridge roll because we've tried it with WD-40 or even kerosene and honestly, it just smeared the carbon everywhere. It was such a mess. We are using 80 grit right now just to get the initial shaping going. Alright, almost done. You can use a rougher grit, but we actually prefer just 80 grit. Alright, now we flip it and it's ready for the roof. Quick look at the bowl before continuing our porting. As you can see right now, again, it actually looks just like a tight bar. But this B20 setup is not supposed to be mild. However, it is still a street car, on a four-door actually. Here we are now, as you can see, it's the texture from the 80 grit sanding roll. It's starting to show us the shape that we're trying to achieve. It needs a little bit more work. Now we flip it over to work on the port floors. Again, we minimize removing material. It's more like just get the contours and shape just right or just smooth you know here we go and here we're almost done and we're gonna blow the dust off with compressed air and get ready for further inspection let's go yeah okay after dusting the head off we inspect the initial shaping using the 80 grit as you can see it's getting closer to finish and here are the shots. And you can visibly see the ports are getting to the desired shape that we want. Something that's efficient and can breathe up top without sacrificing torque at the low end. Now let's get on to the next phase. Now here we are with 120 grit. And you can see it's getting smoother. You can stick with 80 grit but it's, it'll just remain li a little too rough. But then, if you jump straight away to 120 grit, it might take forever. You know, it might just take too long and you get tired, lazy. That's when mistakes happen. So we avoid that. Flip it. 
The 120 grit really helps us smooth the texture and actually let us feel it. If there are little bumps or unsavory shapes, we go take care of it. So we just continue on this until we get the desired finish. You can see it's really clean. That's because of the solvent that we mixed for spraying. All right, now we flip it for the short turn. As you can see, we're trying to catch all the bumps and ridges on the short turn to maximize flow exit. Now the floor, as you can see, it's really, really getting clean and smooth. At this point, I get more excited. So let's blow it with air and inspect. Yeah. Now here is the finished exhaust ports. As you can see, it's really streamlined and you just know it's gonna have good port velocity. This makes it more efficient when running under load or full power. We like to use light like this to show us the contours because we all know light doesn't bend. So if there's an une uneven texture or surface or even rough bumps, we can see it this way. And that lets us decide if we should go back to 80 grit or continue even further with 120 grit. It just depends on the results or how it is. So we're gonna try to show you a lot better pictures so that you can see the efficient contours. As you can see, light don't lie. You can see the good shape that it has achieved. And so we all know this is gonna be an efficient port. We have been doing it this way for years. And in 2017, we actually ran 12.1 with just E85 and undersized slicks of 23 inches. You can click up here for those run videos. Now imagine if you ran methanol and had 24.5 slicks. Perhaps we would have ran deep 11s in 2017, which is four years ago. Now let's head to the intake. But wait a minute, we gotta show you this. Remove the plug here with an Allen wrench. This way, it's, it's gonna make way for a fitting. It's NPT on one side and AN6 to the sandwich plate and that becomes your VTEC oil line. This is because LSB18 blocks don't have an oil passage going up to the VTEC solenoid, as well as the B20. So for an LSV tech or a B20 V tech, we need this. Okay, we're gonna try it once again with my left hand. All right, there. All right, that's it. Now for the dowels. Oh, and tap this part and plug it with an Allen pipe plug. Cause if you don't, no V tech, no life. Now to the dowels. On B16 VTEC heads and even B18C GSR heads, the dowels are here on the exhaust side. And we will show you how it is when we fit a B16 head gasket to it. All right. Because on the non VTEC blocks, the dowel is on the intake side and they actually use uh, an offset dowel pin to make this work. But see, when we installed a B16 head gasket, it fits with a dowel. But as you notice, if you're running a B20, that's a big, big bore difference versus an 81. And that's not gonna pan out well when the engine is running because that blade of a gasket is gonna glow and be a warm spot for pre-ignition. We drill this part with a 14 mm or so drill and this way we fit the dowel. This lets us run a factory B20 head gasket. No need to buy a Cometic 84 mm head gasket just a normal CRV B20 head gasket from the factory. That helps. 
Now we're off to port the intakes. Hey, hey, our ethyl mix with liquid soap is back. We gotta spray the bowls a bit because we're gonna start with 80 grit and we don't want the carbon or carbon buildups to smear out. It's gonna be so messy if we do. So let's go. Now here we are with 80 grit. We usually don't go straight away with a carbide because it tends to carve out a little more than we prefer. So most of the time it's 80 grit. Alright, it's almost done. Okay, now we flip it for the roof. Now we check the bowl first. Hey, it looks like a type R. But in this project, it needs a little bit more. So we'll go on and continue. You'll see. The 80 grit is starting to give the shape that we want. But you gotta feel it so that you don't go overboard. Hey, hey, it's getting cleaner and cleaner. And this usually happens. As you gain momentum, you kind of want to keep going. So we're going to go straight to 120 grit after this. Now onto the 120 grit and back to the roof. And you can see it's getting smoother and the texture is really good. And it looks really, really clean. Thanks to our ethyl alcohol liquid soap mix. And now to the bowl to get it all smoothed up. So for it's gonna be ready for inspection. We'll give you a good view with good lighting. Stick around. Now after some blow drying and cleaning, here we are. Port matching explanation. This is a P30 OEM Honda intake gasket. We're gonna see how it fits. My problem here is that people like to gasket match the heads when in reality gasket makers do not understand or do not care about flow all they want is to make a perfect seal and so we will scribe this just to show you guys how it looks like we use a regular steel wire just sharpened so that we can scribe and leave a mark You can see how much of an offside they are. Port number one is just lower than usual, right? And then you can see on port number two, it's slightly lower, but not as much as port number one. So right there is two different things. Now number three, it's slightly lower, but more swayed to the right side. So gasket matching this port, just gonna twist your flow or your pattern. And number four, just the same. All right now, now we remove the intake gasket to show you guys careful not to tear it here we are now and you can see how much offset the head gasket I mean the intake gasket is to the actual ports the floor is extremely lower even in number two number three it's slightly lower it's still offset you know 
and number four much the same so when you think about it gasket matching just makes it worse it gets your intake ports offset that's not entirely accurate for the intake manifold this is why we make our own intake gaskets but that's for another story but at least now we've made it clear that gasket matching is a no-go however port matching is still ideal okay don't get it twisted and here we are after some cleaning you can see the intake ports are ready to rock and roll yeah boy let's look closer and with proper lighting it lets you see the contours and shape is achieved including texture at the end of this video we will have an end screen about the how-to port that if you follow that and study it well is the right step towards this notice the short turn is curved gradually including the divider without hogging or without removing too much material this way port velocity is your friend next up is we have a rbb casting k24 k series head so you gotta subscribe just to get the latest on our next work and also a prb k20 type r head casting so subscribe because you know you wanna come on